Hey, welcome back. I'm going to try and do some steam bending today. Uh, what you see me doing here is just doing a layout. And there was a couple of ways to go. I could have CNC'd that. I could have built it up with layers and layers of plywood. I had contemplated making a positive and a negative. I said, you know what, let me take a simple approach because I'm kind of just sculpting or sketching out this concept. So I did that silhouette on a piece of scrap walnut plywood that I had laying around. And I said, let me build up some clamp posts, something to bend this layered seam around. And <clears throat> I put together some two by fours, just hot glue with some furniture hot glue. That's like the yellow stuff is a lot stronger. And then using that first piece of uh, MDF, I'm using that as my guide to cut through. And then, of course, I need to go thicker, so kind of tile them almost like like red bricks, just tile it up and around. And I'm just doing a quick, quick thing. I, in, in this video, I'm experimenting as much as I'm building. And I've made canoe stems before on the CNC machine. And I just tried to take a little bit more of a simpler approach just to kind of demystify some of these jigs for the average person that doesn't have either a CNC machine or the wherewithal to make these big molds. So I tried to take a simpler approach in this video. And what you're looking at is these uh, 10 inch wide by quarter inch thick ash planks. I got a bunch of them years ago in a shop buyout. And you could see how old they are. They're probably, it could be from the 70s, and honestly, because you could see how yellowed the edge is. And when I got them from the guy, he says he's had them for 10, 12 years. So I think they're really, really old. And they smell like a library. So that's what makes me think that they're really old anyway I had a lot of it and I still have some more of it so here I am cutting it up I thought it was the appropriate thickness array it's got a lot of little wormholes in it which gives it some character so this is the rock steam bender and you could build a steam bender box but I decided to go with more uh, uh, Duresta method which is the way I've done it a few times if you go back and find my canoe build I steam bent my canoe stems inside of a piece of steel. This is a two by four inch steel tube that I have for building whatever. And so I just cut off a six foot section of it. And this becomes my steam bending box. Of course, if I needed to steam bend something larger, I would need to possibly build outside of this width because that's as big as I've got. And I just make these wooden plugs and the Rockler bender, the Rockler steam uh, bucket comes with this fitting on the end here you'll see it this brass fitting and I just roughly fit it in there that was a half inch drill and it fit in there perfectly now this uh, bucket will only work if you're filled up to a certain height so if it steams off and you're not around it's not going to melt or fall apart it'll just shut off and I just plug the end of the tube and I fill the tube with the wood I need now you see how close that wood was? We're doing four layers. If you noticed how thick that wood was with, it, it steamed up and got a little stuck inside there. I had a little struggle here. So now here it is, uh, maybe about an hour later. You're supposed to steam bend for one hour for every one inch of thickness. And so that was about one inch thick of wood. What was interesting, and you see it, it steamed open to the width of the inside of my thing so I had to be more cautious with the next batch so now you see my thing it's still only just hot glued and it's staying together now you could see how pliable that wood has become now when you steam bend you just have to fit it on the form and let it dry overnight so now what we're doing is we're, I'm going to keep clamping making sure that it fits the form completely because I'm making two sides I want them to be the same it's really important that you get it all nice and tight against that form and like I said I kind of took a the uh, simple approach by making it with the hot glue and the two by fours, but it worked. If you really wanted to take the time, you could make a positive and a negative, you know, just eliminate the one inch. I'm going to do that in a minute on the, the slots for the actual seat. So now here it is the next day. And I take it off, I check it, and it springs open a little bit, but when we glue lamb it back onto there, it tends to stay closer to the shape. So now this is the next steam bend I'm doing. And I am putting it back on the form. And what you see in the foreground there is 
the first bend. Nothing's glued together yet. I just have it all clamped together so it doesn't want to relax. And in the back you see my 1957 ambulance hearse. Just recently picked up. Just working on the radiator there. And making sure everything's nice and tight. I gotta keep clamping. And there you can see I just gave you away how it looks like I have a two camera shoot. I usually just edit out that little camera move. And I make sure everything's nice and tight to the mold. And now here it is. I'm just using Type on 3. And I use Type on 3 because Paul Jackman likes Type on 3. And I'm brushing a liberal coat between each one of the layers. And of course, I have to keep them in order. The same order in which I steam bent them, they must stay in that same order because that's the size they are now. They're in consecutive size order. So it's important to remember how you glue them together. Now this will stay on the form overnight. So now this is a couple days. And then of course I glued the second one. I didn't want to be so redundant. So now here it is a couple days later, altogether a couple days later. And I'm working on the sides of my chair. I'm still not 100% sure what I want to do on the seat at this point in the video. I know what I want. I have a vision, but I haven't defined the exact shape. Uh, but you could see how with the Type on 3 turns brown. And then also you got some stains on the wood from being inside the steel tube. But I know from experience all that just cuts away. And just keep cleaning it up. I'm using a couple of my Veritas hand planes that I have. And just working it down. And I'm not getting too crazy. I could clean up one side and pass it through the table saw or even pass it through a box planer. But I, I don't think it's necessary. This is an organic looking chair. It's going to have some organic bends and stuff. If one section is, uh, you know, three and a half and the other section is an eighth of an inch different, it's no big deal. Now this is where I'm going to define to make sure both sides of my chair are the same size. I keep them together. And I draw that line across them because that isn't just a straight cut. It's a cut in the tangent uh, to the floor. It has to be uh, flat. So from one side of the arch to the other needs to be flat. And now you see how that works. And that was because I drew that straight line across. Now lots of sanding. Getting rid of the glue and the stains from, this, from the steam bending. And you can see there. If I was in a steam bending box, I probably wouldn't have to deal with too much of that staining. And I put some clamps on it to finally close up some of the small little gaps that were left over from the clamping. And now I'm just showing you how I make a two-sided clamping jig. And that's that little piece is my is going to define my bend. Because I realized I needed to kind of do production bending. I needed to bend a lot of these. I didn't want to use one jig to bend all eight of my seat slats. I wanted to have six or seven seat slats so I could bend them all at the same time, so that's day one, and then glue them all at the same time, that's day two. And so I'm just making sure they all stay in order, and now I just go and band sew them. So by using the template for all of them, I have a fighting chance that they'll all be fairly similar. Could have used the CNC machine to make this, but it's just a different setup. It would have taken me considerably longer to CNC something so deep. Band saw cut traditional style works just well, just as well. In fact, it works better because it's quicker. As long as I stay on that line, I'm golden. And here I made six of them. Ultimately, I made eight of them so that I was able to prepare all my molds. So now, I uh, wanted to bring a little bit of color into it. This is two-inch thick walnut. And I didn't have a skinny push stick, so I just used a sacrificial piece of MDF to push that through there. And uh, I am cutting the slats for what's going to become the bent seat area so I'm gonna make eight of these and then eight more of the ash quarter inch ash slats and uh, then we heat steam each one of those and bend them together and just did my count out there <laughs> this is a piece left over if you saw on my channel I did a gavel judges gavel those are some pieces left over from that Two inch thick. I didn't need to dress the top or the bottom. I just cut the sides and ended up with eight of them. And now here I am in the steam bending area. And you can see what I'm going to do. I'm going to laminate the dark color on the back, the light color on the front. And I'm just making sure my count is right. So here's my steam bending tube again. These are all together a little thinner, so I don't need to worry. And I'm doing four 
steams at a time. So I'm doing four pieces of wood at a time. And I just get started with the jig. You could see I'd already done a couple, so I went to school early on on here. And now I'm using my old Prentice uh, pattern maker's vise to get that initial thing going. Just happened to be the right width. and wasn't planning on it, but it worked out good to make sure that those C-clamps or those uh, pony clamps grab exactly where they need to just outside the width of the jaws of the vise. I'm just pulling out uh, two at a time, and then there's two more in there, so I'm just letting them simmer. And you could see how I was able to do sort of a production run of steam bending by having all these little clampy jigs. And I wanted the seat slats to be just about 90 degrees. That's the only problem I had there. You could see how that split a little bit, but I fixed it after everything dried with CA glue. And so now I'm able to make all slats in one maybe two hour steam bending session, two maybe three hour steam bending session. And the following day, I was able to glue them all together in, you know, maybe a two or three hour gluing session. So when you steam bend, it's really important to realize you need a lot of time. I started this video a while ago. You need a lot, a lot, a lot of time. And now here I'm gluing together, and I save you the boredom of showing me glue all eight of them. I just glue one of them. Again, just using Type-On 3, just because it's got some open working time. And I like the fact that it dries black. I thought it would be, well, it dries dark, not black. But... I thought it would be a nice disguise for the walnut. And now I'm just putting it back together. Same clamp. I don't need to this time go into the, the vice jaws, but I'm just clamping it tightly. And now i got to make sure all the, the slats are glued together. So I'm using these, these little screw clamps. I have a lot of these little screw clamps. And I'm hitting them from all directions. And then it turned out this glue session turned into all clamps on deck. Having to find every single clamp. And when you steam bend wood, even though those slats are only two inches, they cup, they pucker, they twist, they turn. So it's important that right now um, I'm gluing them and I'm making sure that everything is straight as I could possibly make it. So now here it is the next day, maybe two days later, and I'm just preparing all the wood for finishing. Just hand planing everything, just a little low angle block plane hand planing all the glue sides, and then palm sanding all the insides. And you'll notice this ash has, a little, like I said early on, it's got a lot of little worm holes in it and stuff. Gives it a lot of character. My only regret for this whole chair is that I made the, that little L shape a little too short. Like right there where I'm sanding should be two inches longer. But you live and learn. That's why all my projects are experiments. They're not, I don't consider them finished works. I consider them a uh, an evolution, a step in the evolution. One day I'll make something perfect. Until I get there, I'll keep practicing. So we're going to do something just like that. So those sides are going to support the slats from left to right. How we're going to do that? We're going to go back to our chunk of walnut. We're going to cut a couple of cross members and screw them in. So here we are back at the table saw. And I'm doing about one and an eighth by about one and three quarters and clean cutting them and so whatever I cut there my leftover is going to be my support there that piece still stuck on the table there is going to be my support later on down the video now I had already clamped the back piece in off camera I'm clamping this one in on camera now I have to make an adjustment and I will only be able to figure out what that adjustment is once I'm in in place and so you see now I have the slat and uh, uh, that back piece needs to follow the angle of that slat and you'll see right there. So that's the angle I need to cut. And I, me personally, I couldn't plan that until I was actually doing it. I'm not one to have a SketchUp drawing. I kind of work in real time. And so there you see that's, it doesn't look perfect on camera there, but ultimately everything gets nice and securely pulled against everything. So there's two in a row. So the way I set this up, I put my cross members and glue them in place and let them dry for a couple of hours and then I screw them. So that's the leg laying on the table and I use my right angle triangle to make sure it's standing upright. So that's perpendicular to the other. And now everything's kind of held in place and I glue this one in place and I have lines to follow. So it's the same markings that I made while they were side by side now that they're apart in space. Making sure that, that cross, both of those cross members do their job. Keep everything square and secure 
in preparation for the bent slats for the seat. And now here I am a couple of hours later, everything's starting to dry. And now I'm gluing in my first two slats. And I said when you steam bend stuff, everything gets a little wonky. So you'll notice how I have to sort of wrestle each one of these slats into straight. And uh, so I decide to start gluing and screwing as I go. So I'm using these gold, traditional old wood screws. Everything has to be screwed in by hand because I don't want to mar up the head of the screw. Pre-drill is the only way to go. There's no way to run that in without breaking it. Brass screws will always break. You've got to make sure you have the right, right hole. And it's really important, I suggest, to do it in a piece of scrap wood. Do your pilot hole, run the screw in, see if it fits without breaking. Because you will break that screw part way in and then your project is really messed up. You got a broken brass screw inside of your beautiful wood project. How do you get it out? You just have to kind of move the hole over and plug it. And this is the back. And you see how I kind of had the slats laid out. I ended up making a 3 8 inch uh, spacer for everywhere between each slat. So I put one slat down and you see the spacers are everywhere because one piece doesn't sit perfectly flat right next to another piece because it's got a different angle. It was glued with the twist in it and so on and so on. So I have to kind of wrangle and physically force each one of these slats to want to live next to each other in the right space. And you could see going kind of up out of camera off the top of the picture there. Everything's a little squirrely in space. But we tie it all together in the next couple of minutes. So running these screws in is no, diff is no easy task. It's very difficult because you don't want to slip. You don't want to slip on the head of that screw. You don't have a scratch or a broken screw or a scarred up screw. So now I'm using those same 3 8 inch spacers and I'm putting them together with the spacers in between. And you see that last one, I had to literally pull it over with that long bar clamp and keep the spacer in. So each one beside the next one defined where that other one was going to be. And you'll notice that rib, which was the leftover cutoff from the ribs between the two arches on the sides, I left it long. And I just cut it to fit. Putting my screws in. In this case, I didn't glue anything because the glue would have gotten all over everything because every slat was so squirrely and bent and twisted. It wouldn't have stayed in place. And I would have just kept putting it in place and it fallen out of place. So I decided not to glue because I don't want the glue to scar up the whole project when I go to paint it. And now I just tighten up those screws and I'm just using a little oscillating tool and I'm using the top of that piece of wood as my guide. Oscillating tool cuts everything so clean and fast. And I'm just cutting off my excess that I just was describing. There you go. A little belt sander off camera and a little, little bit of palm sander. And now we're doing the edge of the seat where I feel like I made it a little too short. But like I said, this project is more about learning and inspiring. I wasn't trying to make the most perfect chair. And again, with the oscillating tool, this is a, it's such a handy tool. You don't know, you can never really plan to use it. Just like one moment you're in a project and you're like, oh, the best project, the, the best tool I'd need for this right now is the oscillating tool. And again, cutting off that side thing. And then there's my belt sander, just getting everything nice and choochy. And palm sanding everything. And there's my finished chair. I don't paint it in this video, only just because it was getting a little long. And the point of the video is bent wood, and I have some bent wood there that makes up a chair. I hope this project inspires you to get yourself a, a steamer and make yourself a bent wood chair project. Or maybe you want to make bent stems for your canoe or something. Me just deciding whether I hit it on the mark or not. And I said I'd make the bottom under my knees longer. I could even maybe mod it. Add like a bull nose to that or like a baker's end. But I'm happy with this. Thank you. And thank you, Rockler. Thank you very much. Hope you enjoyed this.